MSNBC had uh, broadcasted a picture of Trayvon Martin's dead body, and it was a picture that authorities took when they arrived to the scene. And this picture was shown to the jury as evidence in the George Zimmerman trial. As you guys can see, it's uh, graphic and, and difficult to look at. But it gives you a sense of what Trayvon Martin looked like on the night of that shooting. Um, I, I know that uh, the defense tried to make him look like he was some sort of thug, but as you look at that picture, you, he's wearing skinny jeans or skinny khakis. They're folded at the bottom. His hoodie is not even a baggy hoodie. I mean, he, he looks nothing like a thug. He looks like a child. And he was 17 years old uh, on, you know, when he got shot. No, uh, no thug has ever worn skinny jeans. Skin, yeah, I mean khakis also, but yeah. you know, they keep making the big deal about the hoodie, right? And what they showed him wearing there mm -hmm. is not what we all think of as a hoodie, right? When you think of a hoodie, it's like a big sort of baggy fat, sweater. Baggy. That's not what he's wearing right there, which not that that has any relevance on, on so, what but, happened, but, but, but it does have relevance it has on some the context. framing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, so when you, if, if instead you said khakis and a sweatshirt, Right, which is basically what he's wearing. Yeah, then it doesn't seem as menacing as a hoodie. A hoodie. Although I don't think hoodie's menacing, but but some do, right? Yeah. Apparently, Geraldo Rivera, Rivera yeah. thinks it's the most menacing thing so, in the world. So when was the last time a thug cuffed their khakis on the bottom? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. like I don't remember seeing any of the West, gangsters West Side uh, Story. from the yeah. Valley yeah. do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it's absurd, and I I like that Jenk brought up the framing of it because that's really you know the essence of the story here. I mean, you have the two sides. And the, the defense keeps making it seem like uh, George Zimmerman was in grave danger and it was like this very suspicious kid. And, and I don't know, look, do I think that he was capable of hurting uh, George Zimmerman in, all, in, all, in an altercation? Yes, sure, you can't just judge someone based on their looks. But what made George Zimmerman follow him in the first place? If I had seen that guy walking in my neighborhood, I wouldn't automatically think, hey, that guy's suspicious. Yeah. What is it about Trayvon Martin that made him want to follow and, him? And, and to that point, you know, oftentimes uh, the people that are on Zimmerman's side will say, look, this isn't about race, you know? And oftentimes they will talk about, like, it depends on what you're wearing, what the context is, etc. But, okay, now we saw what he was wearing, and it seems like it was about race. I mean, if you had right. a white kid wearing khakis rolled up with a sweatshirt, no way Zimmerman or anybody goes around. It's because look, if he if it was like a hoodie and he's got tattoos, mm -hmm. well, none of this is justifiable. None of yeah, it, right. right? But like, but you might say like, oh, I don't know, he had a neck tattoo and I got irrationally scared, right? But here, none of it is the case, and the only thing that remains is race. Yeah. And so th that's part of the issue here. The other thing is, look, I was torn on whether to show the picture, like you know, because as you, I'm a, I have a, two kids, and I'm looking at that 17 year old kid. And it rips you up inside looking at him there. He's passed away, et cetera. But I, I want the jury to see that. I, I mean, I, And the jury did see that, yeah. thankfully, yeah. And you got, because you gotta remember here, there's a victim. We're not just talking about George Zimmerman and what happens to him the rest of his life. We, the whole thrust of the case is this 17-year-old kid is not going to have the rest of his life. Yeah, yeah the, and of course, MSNBC didn't so much show it as the pool, that, that was what the pool reporter, that's what the pool camera showed, and then they have another camera in all trials that they can go to if something graphic shows up that the pool is showing, and MSNBC was just late to switch. Yeah. By the way, they to, did, right before we started, to, just now, they did apologize already, mm -hmm. MSNBC apologized. Yeah, I, I don't think, I think we should start thinking about how we view, this is a matter of that the country is interested in, this is a news story, and seeing the dead body is a big part of that story. and. I, you know, and, and the guy who wrote this for Gawker, uh, Adam Weinstein, you know, he says to Trav Trayvon's parents, Sabrina Fulton and Tracy Martin, I'm sorry that I feel compelled to share this picture. And I get that's a nice thing for him to say. I totally get why he feels as a reporter compelled to share the story. I think we ought to see it. I think we ought to see the bodies of dead American soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan, and it's largely the same point, that it's somehow disrespectful to show it. But here, in a case where we're talking about literally the manner of his death, Mm -hmm. and the tragedy of such a young death, uh, I think it's of course relevant and it instantly makes an impact on us, as I'm sure, no doubt, it did to the jury. And, and so if you don't see that, you might not be seeing what the jury totally saw. So you know, you got a lot of these experts, so-called legal experts on TV saying, oh, he's likely to get acquitted, likely to get acquitted. But if you didn't see that dead body like the jury did, you might think he's likely to get acquitted, but maybe the jury says, why did he chase down this kid? I mean, look at the picture, et cetera, and so it's, it's uh, unquestionably relevant. Mm -hmm. And then the second part of it is a great point Anna made when we were having this discussion off air as to whether we should show it or not. She said, look, we show the, 
the dead Syrian kids when we talked about the Syrian war, and the, those pictures were far, far more graphic because it's important to know what war is like. And it's important to know what really happened here. This kid actually died, and it's one thing to think about it theoretically. It's another thing to see it and to feel it. And, and when you see it as a human being, you have the reaction, and honestly, the right, the right reaction, which is outrage. Now, that doesn't mean you go on a witch hunt. You got to figure out who did it. You got to be rational about that, and you got to see if you can prove it, right? But part of that process is seeing what actually happened. And just one more thing: when I looked at that picture, it made me even more enraged at the fact that when police arrived on the scene, they refused to arrest George Zimmerman and they refused to do a toxicology test on him. They did the toxicology test on Trayvon Martin. Again, I look at that kid and I don't think, oh my God, he's a threat. Well, why would you do the toxicology exam on him first? Right, and speaking of toxicology, I mean the idea that because he was stoned or had some right. little amount of weed in his system without being glib about weed, I mean nobody is smoking weed and then getting violent. It just never has happened. Now I can understand part of what they were saying was that it could have impaired his judgment in a way that maybe made him seem more suspicious or something like that. I guess there's some slight kernel of truth to that. But, but the fact that that was even brought in, you know, it's not like, we all know what weed does to you. It's not the same thing that doing speed. It's a way of demonizing like him. But, yeah. but, but to me, Anna's point is overwhelming here because we don't know what was in Zimmerman's mm -hmm. system because the assumption of the cops was the guy who did the shooting is, is not the person we should investigate. Not only did they not do toxicology, but they also did not do a criminal background check on Zimmerman. He's the shooter. They did do a, not only toxicology, but a criminal background check on the kid lying dead I mean, if you're a cop, you show up at the scene, you see what we just saw, and you think, oh, well, Zimmerman's it's fine, but let me make sure that this kid is, is not a criminal. It's literally or counter to what every competent policeman in the country would do. 98% of cops are going to see a dead kid going to his father's house, and the other guy had a gun. You're going to run a toxicology test on the guy with the gun.